Mr. B, good evening. Quick question with selling calls, he says. Selling covered calls. Fire away. Does it get exercised at break even price or strike price? If it gets exercised, it's exercised at the strike price. So if you sold a covered call at, say, $20 on AMC, if the person you sold that call to exercises it, they're going to pay you $20 per share. The break-even is going to change depending on if you sold the call or you bought the call. So your break-even is going to be $20 plus however much you got for that option. That's what you, if it goes above that, eh, you missed out on some gains. If it's below that when it gets exercised, you didn't miss out on any gains. In fact, you, you ended up better off. If it's below the strike price at expiration, it expires worthless and you just keep the premium. That's how it works. All right, yeah, yeah, I mean, these things are pretty simple once you, once you get it figured out how these things work. It's all very complicated if you're just trying to grasp this stuff, especially in the abstract. Once you start playing around with it, though, and if you ever get exercised, it'll be fairly obvious. <laughs> I've been exercised a couple of times. Um, not been happy about the, the times I've been exercised. Uh, although one of the times I got exercised was on a put that I had sold. And I was planning on just keep rolling that thing until it came back to positive. Didn't get the chance to do that. And another one I did was on a call. Actually, no, I got exercised three times. I got it. I had leap options on workhorse, and because I was I had leap options, I needed to I needed to make a lot more money before it got exercised. But workhorse had like dropped, and so I was selling covered calls at a lower amount than I would wanted to, and so when it got exercised, I was not above my break even. So that one kind of stunk. And then I had a uh, blink, I had blink leaps. Basically, I got I got kind of screwed when they got exercised, and I was using leaps. I love leaps. There's a good opportunity there to use those in place of owning the actual stock. But you just got to watch out and make sure you're in a position that uh, you're selling covered calls above your break even on those leaps. That way, you're not gonna not gonna be upset if it gets exercised. Mr. B. All right, let's see. You did another NNDM call option, 25, 618 expiration date, 750. Came out to like 1,275 premium. Good for you. That's awesome. Um, I love doing covered calls. Love doing covered calls. My recommendation to folks is if you just focus on accumulating shares of companies that you own, you could just sell covered calls against them and have a nice income down the road. You might have uh, don't you don't even have to worry about the share price day in and day out. You just keep accumulating those shares. Ten years down the road, you got thousands of shares. You could sell dozens of covered calls and just make a, make a nice income stream. Even if those companies don't pay dividends, you're like creating your own dividend stream. It's a great way to make use of the assets that you own. One might say, and I do, it's a good way to maximize your cash flow. That is one of the ways that I suggest people maximize their cash flow using an asset. It's just like owning a, another house, a second house. You're not just gonna sit on it and wait for it to appreciate. You're gonna rent it out and you're gonna make some money on it while it's appreciating. You can essentially do the same thing with your stocks. You can do the same thing with the shares you own. I hope you found value in today's video. If you'd like to find out more about IUL and the whole life, check out these videos right over here. And we'll see you next time. Now go maximize your cash flow.